So let's see if this sounds familiar. You got some money sitting in cash and you want to make decent return. But you don't want to type your money too long and you especially don't want to lose it. Can you really make money? Are there opportunities to exist in today's low interest rate environment? All right, so interest rates have been low for crazy stupid long. Interest rates suck. There used to be a time that you could go to a bank and get a CD paying you 5%. Heck, you could get a savings account or a money market account paying you 5%. That does not exist now. But there are a ton of you that are in the situation, they have money sitting in cash and they want to make some money and they don't know what their options are. So this is a reader question I had that this person has money sitting in cash, they want to make some money, so what options do they have? What options do you have? We're gonna find out in today's video. All right, before we get to this reader question, the one thing that you're gonna notice is that the background is a bit different. So this was a video I recorded in my old home office. Uh, actually, I actually think it was recorded over a year ago, but the information still applies today because interest rates are still low. Nothing has really changed. So the options I discuss still apply today. Yes, I did put on the same shirt just so that there was some continuity and you weren't too confused, but you will notice a different background. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. All right, so let's get on to the reader question. You got low interest rates, you got some money you want to invest, what options do you have? Let's find out what this reader question is. What's going on everybody? Jeff Rose from GoodFinancialSense.com with another edition of GFC TV. And this is one of those editions where I'm going to answer a reader question. So that could be you, reader, if you have a question. You could head on over to GoodFinancialSense.com forward slash ask and ask a question. And guess what? I might answer it just like I am now. Could you be the lucky one? Could you? Could you? You could be. But you have to head on over to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask first. So ask away and I'll answer. Today's question comes from Tian. Tian asks, my husband and I have created a budget plan that works for us. We have followed it for about four years and it allowed us to pay off all student loans and our car loan before we were both 28. Now my question is this, what is the best thing to do with my money for short-term growth that we can still have accessibility. Now that we aren't paying off debt, we are just saving our money to buy a house in the next two to three years. We live in San Diego, so it's not the easiest thing to do. While we're saving, we want the money we do have now to grow instead of sitting in the bank. Some of it is in savings account and some we put into stocks. After your article on peer-to-peer -peer lending, we have considered doing, what, doing that as well. CDs and saving accounts have such low interest rates what are some other creative options? So first, Tian, I wanna say, you paid off all your student loans and your car before you both were 28? Amazing, that's so huge. I don't know if you realize how much you have put yourself in the driver's seat, literally, to where you can have financial freedom. So kudos to you. So the first thing we wanna talk about is low interest rates. Yes, we know interest rates are low and they've been low, it seems like forever. But the one thing you have to do is make sure that you keep enough savings in liquid cash savings so that you have an emergency fund. Now, there are many different views that you can look about this and it all depends on your job and your current income. So for example, if you have a self-employed job where your income fluctuates from month to month, then you're generally you're gonna have more than that nine to 12 months in cash savings. If you feel pretty good about your job and that you feel that your job is gonna be there and you know what your income is, it's very predictable, then having at least six months should be okay. But the other thing that you do want to do or do not want to do is be tempted by short-term growth. And let me give an example. Several years ago, my wife and I were building our home, which is this home right here. We still hadn't sold our other house. And we had about 12 months sitting in cash earning next to nothing. This is back in 2008 when the market took a dump and I wanted to take a third of our cash savings and put it into GE stock. But I asked myself the tough question, Jeff, you are a certified financial planner. If a client came to you and said that they wanna put a third of their cash savings into one stock while they're building a house and haven't sold their other house, what would you tell them? 
And I asked myself the tough question, and I answered that question, and I would said, no, I would not let them do that. So I didn't. Now, reflecting back, I would have made a lot of money. Would have made a lot of money. A lot of money. But I'm okay. I'm at peace with it. But I know that I never would have suggested that to a client to allow them to take that cash and put it to a stock. So I didn't let myself do it either. When it comes to short-term investing, you cannot be tempted by short-term gains because if you're trying to make 10%, there's always that potential that not only could you lose 10%, but you could lose two to three times that. So ask yourself, to make 10% gain, are you comfortable seeing a 20% decline? If the answer is no, then watch out for those short-term gain temptations. Now, the other thing that you asked me about is peer-to-peer -peer lending. And I will tell you, I'm a big fan of peer-to-peer -peer lending. I've been doing peer-to-peer -peer lending for, I think, four or five years now, and I've made some pretty good return. But the one thing that you have to know about peer-to-peer -peer lending is that it is not a short-term investment. Peer-to-peer -peer lending tends to be about a three to five year investment. So if you are looking to buy or build a house in the next two to three years, peer-to-peer -peer lending might not be the best choice for you. But if you don't heed my advice and you still wanna give it a try, at least follow this. If you do peer-to-peer -peer lending, do not have the interest reinvested back into new notes. What happens is, is that those reinvestments are now reinvested back into new notes, extending that period for an additional three to five years. And if you're needing to sell those notes or to get them into cash, there's just a process that's not gonna be as quick as you think it's going to be, especially if you need a down payment on that home. Okay, the final thing that you can do is investing into ETFs, exchange traded funds. I like ETFs in this particular situation because they're very, very low cost. Now ETFs comes in all flavors. You can do stocks, bonds, commodities, real estate, and all of the above. Since we're talking about short term, we want to have more of an emphasis on short term bond ETFs in that one to three year mark. And I wouldn't go any more than 40% into stocks. Actually, I'd be more like 20%, but whatever your risk tolerance is and what you're comfortable with. Now, if you're not comfortable choosing your own ETFs, one of the best platforms I can recommend is Betterment, and that's betterment.com. Betterment will manage your ETF portfolio for you based on whatever your goals are. So you can put your money in, and then Betterment will decide the right ETF strategy for you based on when you need the money, in your case, two to three years, and how much risk you're comfortable taking. And you don't have to do anything, they do it all for you. So Tian, I just once again want to say thank you for asking that question. When it comes to short-term investing, I know that you want something creative, but what I've recognized is that when we start to be creative, especially with short-term investing, we end up finding ourselves into creative problems or creative holes or pitfalls. So be careful not to be too creative. Some of the options that we discussed today are a great fit, especially for what you're looking to achieve. So if you're a fellow GFC out there and you also have a question like TN, I encourage you to go to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask so that I can answer your question on the next edition of GFC TV. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose. Take care.